Wes, and today we have a new contender in the field of high color accuracy LED lighting, and it is the iFootage SL1 200 BNA, the B for bicolor, and it's also known as the Angler Fish. This little angry guy here, well, I don't know if he's angry, maybe he just had a bad morning. We see some uh, very boastful stickers on the side here, unmatched color spectrum, low blue light protection, red dot LED 4.0, oh boy. <laughs> Well, thankfully, we're not just going to take their word for it, we're going to put it up against a spectrometer and see exactly what's going on here, but first of all, we're going to start with the build quality. If we take this thing apart, we'll see that the back and the front of the light, which is incredibly common, are largely plastic. Now, unfortunately, when you look very close at the Bowens mount on the front, we find that they cheaped out just a little bit on the plastic. It's looking pretty thin underneath where the Bowens holds out. Now I have used it with some very large soft boxes, have had no issues myself, but that's one issue that I would take with how this is built. Also, this is held on the whole Bowens mount front here with four fairly small screws. They look reasonably robust, but I just don't like it when manufacturers do that. We have our light protector on the front here. Let's see. Seems to be glass. I can't seem to scratch it, so that's good. We come around to the back. We have kind of an unusual thing. It is a four pin connector. It looks a lot like an XLR, but it's not. XLR is three. And it's not like the uh, DMX control or the power control that we see on aperture lights, which is five. This is four pin. So it's a little bit proprietary. And I mean, it is a standardized connector, but it's not one that you see in a lot of lights, which can be a little bit annoying. On the bottom here, we have lots of solid metal for the light mount. I was a little bit skeptical of this tiny little handle, but there is a nice ball bearing washer on the middle that makes it slide very smoothly, and lockdown is actually impressive. If we roll around to the bottom here, we see we have an umbrella mount, but it lines up perfectly with the power socket, so your umbrella arm is not going to go any further than that so it's only for smaller umbrellas seven foot umbrella is a little bit dicey on the back here we have a plastic screen <laughs> yeah we dig in a little bit there the button feels pretty plasticky the knobs themselves feel cheap but the tactile response on the knobs is very nice it feels nice on the inside we'll talk more about that a little bit later and on the inside you can see we have a full metal chassis and everything's held together very well but in a nice very serviceable modular manner which i appreciate it's not super convoluted getting into this and the whole thing kind of slides apart once you get all the screws out that's nice our bowen's release is a self-contained mechanism on the inside so it doesn't fall apart as soon as you open it feels a little plasticky but it has nice tactile feedback and once we get to the very end which is this handle it has a decent handle size but it's not nearly as nice as say this full metal handle on a coal bore lights it has a nice big rubbery grip and oh it's nice but it takes up a lot of space underneath the light so a little bit of a give and take there and a funny little shout out just to the clb protector some lights aren't shipping with those anymore, and that's incredibly annoying to me. But also, you have some holes in it, so if you do turn it on by accident, it's not going to melt down right away. It's nice and sturdy. Our wire for hanging from a light stand, that's kind of a must these days. And we're looking at a six foot cable bringing us all the way up to the light. So for build quality, it's not perfect. I have some complaints. I'm going to give that an 8.5 out of 10. Moving on to feature set. We have an app that integrates with this that allows you to take control of all of our lighting effects as we are used to finding in lights these days. We have a COB LED that's supposedly very high quality as a feature, but it's one that we're gonna talk about in light quality more specifically afterwards. There is no DMX control of this directly as some lights have, but we do have that app control. We have a Bowens mount, which is very important, but also very common. Umbrella holder, again, a little bit iffy on that. Quite quiet when in operation, below 40 dB. Let's just take a minute and go through our lighting effects to see how those look. And a big ol' seizure warning for this part of the video. Come back at 7 minutes and 21 seconds if you want to skip over all this stuff.
They are good, not the most plentiful number of effects and not the best effects, especially when you're lacking RGB, you can be a little bit limited there, but it's still fine. I'm gonna give this a 9 out of 10 for features. It's a pretty well-rounded light. Usability. One hit to usability is that umbrella problem where it can't go all the way through. Another hit to usability is that when you slap a softbox or a protector on here, it's tidy lefty, not tidy righty. I hate that. I know a lot of manufacturers do that. Aperture does that, but I don't like it. I want people to stop. Should be tidy righty, lefty loosey, every time, every situation. One thing I want to talk about is how these knobs react, and I have to say, I love it. A lot of lights don't have inertial scrolling. If you don't know what that is, we're gonna talk about that in a second. Some do, but it's either too slow or too fast. This one, I don't know what it is, but it just, it feels so intuitive. You can go slowly, 0.1% increments, or you can give it a twist and just fly up the scale. You don't need these shortcuts, which is great to have, but you can just twist it with just the right amount of intent and get where you want to go. CCT1 doesn't have quite that same effect. We have shortcuts on that, but I know it sounds weird to harp on this, but man, do I love exactly how they programmed the speed of this dial. You go slow, it goes slow, you go fast, it just rips right through. Went to 100%, back to zero. Fantastic. Shout out to the engineers there. And one big part of usability is how much power you have available at your fingertips. And as you can see, this tracks a little bit below a lot of 200 watt rated lights, but that's because it only gets to 199 watts, whereas a lot of them underrate and then come out at like 220 watts. And so you have a little bit more power available, but a lot of these other lights are wasting some of that power in the blue end of the spectrum. And we will see that coming out in the light quality very soon. The app, if we look at the app here, we flip around just a little bit. It is very simple and easy to use. It's not as full featured as the Aperture Amaran Sidious app, but most people don't need all that stuff going on. And so it makes it easier to use in the long run. So for usability, I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. The biggest hit, honestly, is that umbrella issue. And I never use umbrellas anyway, so it's not a big deal for me. It might be a deal breaker for you though. All right, moving on to light quality, and boy, do we have charts and graphs as collected by our spectrometer. They boast unmatched color spectrum and low blue light protection. But what does that even mean? Well, if we compare this to the Colbor CL220R, which has ostensibly fantastic color rendition, there's this huge hump down at the blues. But why is that? Well, most daylight balanced or even remotely white LEDs start out as blue LEDs that have a phosphor coating on them to cause them to excite and emit a broader color spectrum. But that results in still a lot of heavy blue going on and there's some retooling necessary to bring that down. But does that make it more accurate? Well, that depends on what time of day and what sun you're asking. In a normal sunny day, there is actually a lot less blue light going on, but if we're staring in the shade, all you can see is the blue sky, so, so there is heavy blue. Depends on what kind of light you're looking for, but for the most part, there isn't this very sharp spike of blue in daylight as there is in most, if not nearly all, COB LED or LED lights that are vying for complete color accuracy. And just a quick note about the red at the end of the spectrum, human vision can't really see beyond 750 nanometers, and it actually tapers off at that point as well, so all that massive bump of red at the end there. That's leading into infrared light, which isn't actually all that helpful, but we do need a good representation of that early red for our R9 color space, but don't worry about that huge hill at the end that just keeps on continuing through into a spectrum that is invisible to human beings. Now, if we get into the nitty gritty here, you'll see that this has a measured CRI of 98.1 of any mono light that is the highest score that I have gotten. And that's at 5,600K. We go to 6,500K, we're looking at 96, which is very high, but not the highest. And again, down at 2,700K, 96.8. If we go look at the R9, which is the skin tones, we have a 98, which again is the highest of any mono light, although it is a tie. 
Where we're going to lose some points here is in Kelvin shift. That is where we measure at 5600K at 100% power, and then we drop it down to 10% power. Here, we're at 5607, and then we drop it down to 10. It goes colder to 6011, so it's not super consistent when you change your power output. Now, most of that drop-off is pretty close to 10. It's not near 100, so if you're mostly above 50%, it's not going to be a huge issue for you. And with CCT accuracy, that's how close it is to where the white balance is supposed to be. We see that again at 5600K, it's at 5607. That is as close as you're going to get. 6500, it is bang on 6500. And at 2700K, it is 2715. So this is almost the best that I have measured. It is the most accurate CCT or white balance of any monolight that I have tested. So that gives us a final score of 91.8, which ends up being number four in our list for light quality. And of a bicolored monolight, it is number two. So that is phenomenal. Not necessarily the best color rendition, essentially tied for the best color rendition. Important little caveat here, this can have firmware updates installed through the app, and I'm pretty sure that they could retool that Kelvin shift and fix that, and that would move this light to number one. And I sent them an email, they're sending that information to their engineers, and I'll put a note down below in the comments if they do end up fixing that. As it stands, we have a light quality of 9.2, which is fantastic. Value iFootage, they are a smaller brand, a newer brand, not super new, not as new as you might think that they are. And so, you know, they're going to come out swinging here. And let's see, do they? This has been released at 370 US dollars. Let's check out the competition. So first, we have the Molus G200. This one comes in at $380. You're paying a bit of a premium for the form factor. Not quite as good light quality. We have the Colbor CL220. This is only $300, really the value leader of this segment. But the light quality on this, CRI 95.8, R9 of 82, not nowhere near the light quality coming out of this as we have in the iFootage. There's also the Amran 200XS, which we're currently filming on, $350, nearly the same light quality, not quite there. Light Mons LA200 by, I think I got it back there somewhere, $350. Small Rig RC220 by, $370. Again, poor R9 and CRI rendering on that one. Nanlite FS200B, 350 have the GVM SD200B, $240, or the 300 for 390. Not as good light quality coming out of 300, especially when you go up or down in the white balance, really falls off for the CRI and R9 values there. Also very inconsistent with the CCT and white balance, even worse than this one. Love that light, better value than this, so you get some trade-offs here. And if you want to go crazy, there is the Godox No LED 200 by their hmm, pro lineup, $780. It's a big boy. But the biggest problem for this light is this, the Colbor CL220R. This one comes in at $400, has RGB and almost the exact same color light reproduction quality as our anglerfish here. It still costs more than this. So it's not cut and dry here, but I'm going to give this a value of eight out of 10. And that brings us to a total score of 86.4%, which puts us at number four on our rating scale behind the CL220R, the CL220, and the GVM SD300B. Impressed by all of those lights. So what do you think about the new SL1200 BNA? Anglerfish from iFootage. Is the product name too long? Is it a good contender? Are you impressed by the charts and graphs? Let me know down in the comments below if you want to pick one of these up. There's going to be a link down in the description to help support this channel and feed my fat cats. So until next time, let's take some very color accurate videos.